Hi, Facebook and YouTube. This is Bob Brown. I'll try to get this video as short as I can. It's been blowing up on me. It's about negaholics and psychopaths. Dr. Rubin did a book in the 1970s called The Angry Book, and he talked a lot about negaholics and neg negativity, negative thinking, uh, about slush fund anger and all this. And it's a very interesting book. We'll talk about that another day in a business context. But today I want to talk about negaholics and negativity. A negaholic is a person who's addicted to negative thinking. You're looking at a negaholic right here. I am a negaholic. I am definitely a person who gets addicted to negative thinking. I will think negatively. I will think the worst about situations. And I really had to break myself of this habit. And it's a, it's a rough habit to break. <clears throat> Negaholics, you know, you get, like, you get fed by CNN, MSNBC, the Washington Times, negative, the New York, the New York uh, uh, Times, Washington Post. Negative, 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 negative. And if you're a negaholic, you'll eat it up. You'll eat it up. I hate Donald Trump. I hate Donald Trump. I hate Jews. I hate Muslims. I hate Christians. And ultimately, you hate yourself. So you got to get rid of all that thinking. That's negaholics. Now, if you're a negaholic, you are particularly vulnerable to a psychopathic influence. And so a psychopath is a person who has a congenital brain structural defect that they lack empathy. The, 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 uh, the occipital cortex and the amygdala, they don't work like they do in most humans. If you did a sine, C-I-N-E, MRI, you would see the structure of the brain. When you look for certain empathy questions, they don't light up. They simply don't light up. They just don't care. They're very, and psychopaths are very manipulative. They're very, they're very, very persuasive. They're very charismatic. They remind you a lot of the vampire stories, uh, you know, how vampires have this influence, or this undue influence over people. Um, it'd be interesting to do a video on the comparison of the two, of the, of the myth, we hope it's a myth, of the vampire and psychopaths, and they really correlate pretty quickly. If you think of the Barnabas Collins character on Dark Shadows, how Barnabas Collins could get people under his spell, and he'd get these women and men to do things for him. Very psychopathic. I would almost call it the Barnabas, Barnabas Collins effect. And if you're a negaholic, you can easily fall under the spell of, an, of a psychopath, or you could easily become a victim of a psychopath. And I'll talk more about myself becoming a victim of psychopaths in another video at another time. But the point is that when you're encountering in business, in your personal life, in your church, your organization, um, your, your fraternal orders like you're a Freemason, what I'm seeing more and more is the psychopathy of a psychopath. And this person could be on the Internet, right? They could be on the Internet saying that all Freemasons are bad people and they're programming their puppets to go out and do things. We see a lot of that now. Uh, and, I, and my one video got cut off. But like I said, if, if you can, the problem with psychopathy and the theory that we have more and more psychopaths and they're, they're chasing the world towards oblivion, is if you look at Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo Bay, if you look at the invasion of Iraq, if you look at what ISIS is doing to the Christians, psychopathy is an epidemic. It's an epidemic. And I do differ with Dr. James Fallon. He's a neuroscientist and also a uh, psychopath. He is, he is a psychopath. And he kind of says that psychopaths have a positive role in society. And he's talking like if they're Green Berets, if they're police officers, if they have to do, if they're brain surgeons, they have to have very clinical, they don't have any empathy, they just have to perform as well as possible. So he says that, and I, and I think I would agree with him on this point, I would call that psychopathic light. These are psychopaths, but they still have enough understanding and they, they, can, they can emulate morality to the point that they can function normally. But, they're, but psychopathic light, I think, is very rare. Like neuroscientists or neurosurgeons like Fallon, they are psychopaths, but they're very rare. The problem is the majority of psychopaths aren't aware that they're psychopaths. They're unaware of what they are. If they can be taught what they are, if you could do a sign MRI, you could probably get them into proper treatment and they can be put in society properly. And as I've said in all my videos, I don't advocate any violent action towards psychopaths. I view them as a person with a medical disorder. Having said that, it's not pleasant when they start manipulating people around you or they try to manipulate you. And they do a lot of what I call drip marketing, the negative drip marketing. They, they start off, <clears throat> they usually start off very slow and steady. 
they'll, they'll, they're over here, out here behind you. If you're a leader, in a, uh, you're a manager in a business, or you're in a relationship, or you're the leader of a church, and these people just take a dislike for you because maybe you slighted them somehow. If you look at what Fallon said about slighting psychopaths, you could have slighted somebody seven years ago, and they're going to get back at you. That's what Dr. James Fallon said, not Bob Brown. So think about that. If you slight someone and they just take a dislike to you for whatever reason, they're like, I'm going to get even with that guy. I'm going to get even with him. And then, and like Fallon says in his own words, he said, you'll never know where it's coming from. So as I've said in other videos about your own personal life that goes into turmoil or your business or your church or your organization, when you see all this drama start you know, boiling around you, you need to stop and think, am I under the attack of a psychopath? And again, the psychopath may not be in the four walls you're looking at. They could be on the internet. They could be two doors down. They could be, you know, a continent away. But usually they're somewhere in the vicinity of your life. You just have to figure it out. You have to lock on to it eventually. And eventually you'll start seeing the signs. As I said, the biggest sign is they treat you as prey. A psychopath treats you like prey. I ask people this question. Do you ever think about the pain and suffering of the animal that you're eating right now went through. When you chew into that cheeseburger, do you think about all the pain and suffering of that animal in the slaughter? I don't know about you, but I sure as hell don't. <laughs> but maybe we should actually, right? Maybe we should. But that's how a psychopath views you. You're no different to them than a hamburger. You're just prey to them. That's how psychopaths work. And they will manipulate people, and they're very persuasive like James Fallon is. Steve Jobs was supposedly a psychopath. I don't know if he was or he wasn't. I would probably say he was. That's just my opinion I'm based on no scientific evidence. So take it just as an opinion. They're very persuasive. They can get people to think their way, and, and they can manipulate people to go the way they want. And they're, and they're very charismatic. And they can get a hold of people. And how they get a hold of people is what I call slow hypnosis. Slow hypnosis is a slow, and psychopaths are, and if you're a negaholic, and I'm a negaholic, and, and if you're prone to hypnosis, I'm prone to hypnosis, a psychopath will do the slow motion hypnosis on you. The slow hypnosis. It's slow motion. They hypnotize you by saying, I really don't like dogs, or I really don't like cats, or I really don't like this or that. And it may be incongruous, I can never say that word right, with what we're talking about. But they're slowly getting you, they're, you to think the way they think. You see what I'm saying? So they start out here in left field like, I really hate baseball. I like baseball, by the way. I like football. And I like all sports. I like martial arts. I like all that. But they'll get you to hate your sport. So if you used to like baseball and you're around someone now and suddenly you don't like baseball anymore, that's probably a sign you might be under the influence of a psychopath or someone you know close to you is under the influence of a psychopath and they've convinced, they were convinced and then they were convinced to convince you to hate baseball or they were, or, or, or in a business world, your close associates, your colleagues, maybe it's your wife, they convince you to hate your business or to hate your boss. And so you're getting it sometimes direct from the psychopath. Sometimes you get it through another party that's under the influence of a psychopath, and then they influence you. Psychopaths are adept at this. And again, this would, you could say this is all the ravings of a mad person in his kitchen. But if you look at Abu Ghraib, if you look at the million people killed in Iraq, you tell me. What happened in the CIA? What's happening in the CIA right now? They're fighting Trump tooth and toenail. You know why? Because Trump's coming after him. I said in my first video when he got elected, I said he's going to go after them because there are psychopaths in the CIA. And there's, only, there's not many, but they don't have to be many. They're like vampires. They can have tentacles that are unbelievable. I've seen this in my own life. I've seen this in other businesses. I've seen this how these people get their hands on people. And through this slow motion hypnosis and this slow poisonous uh, drip marketing, they start manipulating people. And they, by the time they're done, they've convinced all your workers to leave. If you own a hair salon in Bloomington, and I know what I'm talking about right now, and I actually talked to the owner and I said, you're on, you have a problem here, son. And he said, what are you talking about? And I, w I won't go into details, but I explained to him, I said, I think you actually are dealing with a psychopath here. I said, I'm not a psychologist, I'm a business analyst. But I'm saying, these people are being manipulated to hate you. 
Why? Now, maybe you're a jerk, and he might be a jerk, but I said, but is it totally that you're a jerk, or is it something else? And the person said, I think it's something else, Bob. He said, maybe I should do better with my employees. Well, I said, you better start immediately. Anyway, I won't go into details because I won't disclose you know, this person's confidence, but I want to use an example that I was convinced, and I, I, and I actually kind of used my hand and pointed. I said, if I had to pick it, it's that person right there. I said, that's your problem. You better keep your eye on it. I said, it's either that's the person who's spreading these malicious rumors, or I said, they're being affected by someone else that's doing this. Now, maybe it's just they want to start their own business. I said, that's not a crime. Just go up to them and say, hey, you want to start your own business? Let me help you. Let me help you start your own business. You know, maybe we can be partners. Maybe we can start a different type of salon. Maybe I can front you money to help you start a different type of salon that's not direct competition with me. But I have seen countless cases since I've been doing this research for my doctorate. And I'm, I, and I'm not seeing boogeyman under the bed. I'm telling you, there's probably a 1 in 20, 1 in 50 chance that, that psych, in, in the numbers, 1 in 20 people or 1 in 50 are psychopaths. Some psychopaths are harmless. They never do anything to anyone. But there are some, and I'd say this is about in the 1 in 50 category, that they're, ap they, they're happiest when they're being malicious towards other people. Why? Because that's, they, they lack empathy. And we're prey to them. We're just prey. We're hamburgers. That's what they think of us. Now, again, I'm not advocating any violence towards these people. You just have to recognize these are people that have a medical problem. Now, once they get a hold of someone or get someone holding your business, they can have enormous power. And if they, if they know if a psychopath has control of some of your key employees... And then the psychopath meets someone and says, hey, if you can get this information from that company, we'll pay you $1,000, $10,000, $100, we'll buy you a beer, whatever it is. And the psychopath takes pleasure out of that because they say, hey, I get, I get up on everybody. And what's kind of odd about a psychopath is they don't necessarily, like me, I want to take credit for what I do, right? I, if I do something good, I want to take credit. If I do something bad, yeah, I don't really want to take credit. you know. But a psychopath, they don't need that outward acknowledgement, they just need, they, they, it's all about the glee, inner glee of knowing they've done something mean to someone. So if you're a negaholic, you've got to be on guard against negative thoughts. As my dad said, if you don't have anything good to say about anyone, don't say anything. Silence is gold and keep your own counsel. Inner positive engine. I've seen this firsthand. Like I said, I was helping a business person just, just recently. It was kind of a weird situation. But you've got to keep a Norman Vincent Peale positive of power, the power of positive thinking. Stop thinking everyone's negative, everyone's bad. Everybody has faults and failings. That's human nature. But when you have a person that every day is putting that little tincture, that little tincture of negativity about someone else or about yourself or about society or about people of a different race, religion, or color, that little tincture, that's how it is. It's what I call slow motion hypnosis. It's slow motion. It's not like they're going to sit you in a chair and, and put you under hypnosis. It's slow motion hypnosis. It, they slowly, slowly, slowly hypnotize you into hating yourself or hating your spouse or hating your business or hating your dog or hating baseball. Whatever gets them a kick. I've, you've got to be on guard for these people. And again, I'm not saying you should shun these people, but once you understand what they are like that, their power is broken. It's like sunlight on a vampire. Once you say, okay, this person could be a verifiable psychopath. If we could get him into an MRI and see it, we could say, yep, that person's got all the symptoms. And there are tests that you can do, by the way, also. And there is external tests that you can learn that are actually uh, shockingly effective, that you can do tests on people with questions and how they respond. And you have to catch them when they're off guard. But you can do questions, and it's amazing. You can, they, they, they answer it the way they're supposed to answer it. I was shocked when I did it to two people that I was convinced that were psychopaths, and their answers came right back like they should. And I'm like, holy cow, this thing actually works. Again, don't shun these people. Don't hate these people. These people should be treated with mercy, compassion, and understanding. But if you're like me, if you're a negaholic, you've got to put yourself on guard because I've seen this firsthand. Now that I've gone through a lot of transformation in my life. I learned about the, the Arnold Cheria 1 malformation of the brain that I'm struggling with. And now that I understand that, 
like I've told people, you can affect change. It's, you know, you, you, you can be like Nietzsche, you know, you can affect change. You know, you can, man is the indeterminate animal. You're not like a cat or a dog that's pre-programmed. A human can reprogram himself. It's the power of positive thinking. Keep telling your subconscious that you're going to be a winner, that you're going to excel in business, that you're going to make that big sale, that you're going to get that bonus, that you're going to make your boss happy, that you're going to provide for your family, you're going to make your family proud, for, uh, proud of you. You're going to, you see, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm programming. I'm doing a form of hypnosis. This is what I call, you know, auto-suggestion, uh, uh, positive hypnosis. You've got to do auto-suggestion, uh, auto-suggestion, positive hypnosis on yourself. If you don't do the auto-suggestion, positive hypnosis on yourself, and you may be, you, th you suspect that you are a negaholic, I'm a negaholic, and you suspect that you or someone you know is under the influence of a psychopath, you have to do this auto-suggestion, positive uh, reinforcement in your brain. You have to. And if you see that in your business where you have an employee that's bringing everyone down, you've got to bring that employee in there, and you may have to do a quick analysis say, what am I dealing with here? What am I dealing with here? Again, we're not psychologists, but not everyone can go to psychology. You've got to look and say, how does this person react? You know, and there are certain tests you can give them. And you can say, okay, this person is this to say by happenstance, you somehow discover this person is a psychopath. Should you fire him? No. I didn't say that. I said treat them with mercy, dignity, and respect. You say, okay, you're probably not going to be the right person to be my customer service rep at my cash register. You might be the right person to get all the meat cuts ready and the hamburger patties frying on the back grill because, you know, they may not be as squeamish. And, the, and then you put the person back there and you put them on it and 20 minutes later you're like, holy cow, this person is doing better than ever. So you see there are cases where psychopaths actually do great jobs. So you have to have that understanding of these people. Just like if they had Alzheimer's or dementia or they had, you know, they had a broad spectrum uh, uh, autism or Asperger's or they had uh, a form of schizophrenia. You don't hate these people, run away from them like the Middle Ages. You have to understand them scientifically. But if you don't understand them scientifically, and this is where I had to go, it took me a long time to get this understanding, then you can easily fall under the influence or people around you or your business can fall under the influence of these people. And they could be external people. They could be vendors walking in the damn door for all you know. You have to watch for that. So if you see that the business morale is going down, you've got to start looking around like, why is it going down? Every time that damn guy comes in here, you say to yourself, these people are always in a bad mood after he leaves. Go ask him. Is that guy like a negative guy? Yeah, he always says our business isn't doing so well. and I'm, He's kind of making me worried about my job. Well, you and I both know as managers, the next damn time that guy shows up, it ain't going to be the employee standing there. You're going to be standing there. You say, Let me, can you step into my office for a second? Yeah, what's going on? Well, I got reports that when you show up, you're talking down my business, and you're, I'm paying you money, so what the hell do you think I should do with you? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it to myself. I said, yeah, you better, you better keep it to yourself, because I'm going to tell your boss. I said, right now it's between you and I. I said, and that's how you really should deal with people. Give them a chance. Okay, right now it's between you and I. Maybe this person is a psychopath. We don't know. But you say, between, but right now this is between you and me. If we can settle it right here, it won't go any farther. And the person will probably say, I don't want to go any farther. Great. I don't want to go any farther either. You're a good vendor. You know, outwardly, you've been a very good employee for your company and you've helped me out a lot. But internally, you've got a dialogue problem that you need to keep to yourself and get cleaned up. So that's how you would deal with one of these people, if they're a psychopath or they're negative, negaholics and they're spewing all this stuff. Again, that person there may be the influence elsewhere. It's extremely complicated what I've gone through here, and it's taken me a lifetime to walk through all these problems. And that's why I'm putting these videos out here, and I hope it helps people. Again, I'm not telling anyone to hate anyone. Quite the contrary. I'm telling you to use science, logic, reason, compassion, and the power of positive thinking and prayer and when you detect this going on, you have to take steps. First thing I had to do is I had to become, I had to deprogram myself from my negaholism. And like an alcoholic, when you're a negaholic, you're a lifelong negaholic. You're just going to have to accept it. But what you do is you have to go through the 12-step program just like any other 12-step program and reprogram yourself and say, okay, I'm, I'm thinking negatively, I'm talking negatively, I've got to stop that, I've got to get back on the positive light. I catch myself all the time. A lot of times I wear a rubber band on my arm, 
And that's kind of like from what the Jesuits do. And I'll talk about that in another video. But basically, if I start thinking negative, I'll snap that rubber band. And that's a way of, you know, it's like a Zen slap, like a Zen master slaps a, a student that's drifting. That's my Zen slap. It says, get out of that negative thought. You start thinking positively. And that little rubber band, which I borrowed it's from the, uh, what the Jesuits do, you know, you know, basically they have a, a cross and they, they hold the cross and pray. I would do that too, but I just it's kind of hard to do that in a lot of environments. So I just use a rubber band, and it's my Zen cone moment. It's just, hey, stop thinking negatively. Once you're not negative, you're less likely to be influenced by psychopathic influence, whether that's on CNN, the Washington Post, the New York Times, crazy Internet channels, or people around you that maybe have fallen under negative influence, or they're under drugs, or they're, they have depression problems, or they have schizophrenia problems, or all this stuff. And the world's full of it, gang. The world's full of it. So you really have to protect yourself. So this has been a long video, but I want to get it out here because I've seen this happen. I had to help a local business person kind of work with a problem on this. And, you know, it, 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 it's, it, once you understand it scientifically, like I have, you see it. You can see it as plain as day. And once you see it, you can start maneuvering around it. And again, don't take glee or any fascination. Help the people who are negaholics who may be under this influence and say, you know, I know this person's your friend and they tell you all these things, but is it really true that everybody that's a Christian is a bad person? Is it true that everyone who's a Jew is a bad person or Muslim or black or white or whatever their, whatever their hang up is? Or is it true that that person is totally irredeemable? That person is totally irredeemable. I mean, I've seen that. I've seen how psychopaths will slow motion hypnotize people into saying, these people or that person or this organization is totally irredeemable. When you hear these absolutes, you're probably knowing that it can't be true. Not every human being is completely evil. Not every human being is completely good. You know, no, no, you know all have sinned and, and fallen short of the glory of the Lord. These are good lessons to learn. So, I'm conveying this as a business and personal life. I've seen it. I've seen the effects of negaholism on myself, of this cherry of one malformation on my brain, of getting into depression, and then people falling on under undue influence. Like I said, it's a slow motion hypnosis. It's a slow motion. They slow motion walk you into it. And that's how, why children hate people of different races, religions, and creed. They try to slow motion walk you into it. They try to lecture you into it. I, I, I had another video about something else along these lines. I said, I refuse to be hypnotized. You can, you can take the Jedi mind trick and go away. But beware of these psychopaths. They're out there, and they are manipulating people, and they slow motion walk people to their destruction. Why? Because they can now, it's easy to hate them, and I understand if you do. I understand it 100%. But I'm advocating science, logic, reason, mercy, and prayer for these people and to redirect them where possible. If you can't redirect them, you know, then go to a lawyer. Go to the FBI. Go to the police. Go to your boss. Go to a people of authority and say, we've got to keep an eye on this person because this person is destroying our business, destroying our goodwill with our customers, destroying the goodwill of my family, whatever. Get them the hell out of there. Either, either they get into a containment where they can be productive for the business or productive in their own life, or get them the hell out of your life. You have to. And, and I'm telling you, I've seen it. This slow motion hypnosis, this drip marketing, how everybody's bad. And believe me, and I would tell people who've been under the influence of these psychopaths, you, you're, you're not the only puppet they're running. They may be running 30 people. James Fallon, read the work of James Fallon. They're running a lot of people. They're not just running you. They're running 30 people. So it's shocking what happens. And it's fascinating what structural differences in the human brain can do. It gives these psychopaths very charismatic capability because they lack empathy. But I don't think lacking empathy is a weakness. I think it's the greatest strength a human being has. So once you understand this psychopathy, even amongst the horrors that ISIS that we're going to see, remember before you hate them, and I know it's going to be easy to hate them, it's going to be easy to hate the sin, and I'm sure going to be the first one hating it, I know I will, because I know my own negative self. You have to say, 
this really is a mental illness that we've got to start to understand. We've got to understand why people do this. And we have made great strides with the work of James Fallon that there's a structural problem in the brain of the um, occipital cortex and the, and the amygdala. We understand that now. They don't function right. They're not communicating right. My own self, I have a cherry of one malformation that causes all kinds of mood disorders and balance disorders. So I understand only too well. That's why I have compassion towards these people because I know that from a genetic point of view, you don't have the control. But I would say to anyone, psychopath, non-psychopath, under the influence of psychopath, cherry one malformation like I have, you can affect change. You are a human being, and you once you understand what you are, like James Fallon, you can affect change. I'll end on this point. Nietzsche said that man is the indeterminate animal. We can determine what we are. Human beings can determine what they are. Even with these structural brain problems of the psychopath, the cherry of one malformation, you can affect positive change. My whole point of this is recognize if you have negativity problems, use Norman Vincent Peale, be positive thinking. If you see people having this slow motion hypnosis being worked on them, step with them aside and say, brothers and sisters, you don't need to be paying attention to this negative thought of this person over there. Then talk to this person do your analysis and say, maybe I'm dealing with a person who has a, a, a brain disorder. Put them in a different line of work. Or at the worst case, get them out of your life. And that doesn't mean violently, by the way. That just means this person will no longer be coming to our house. This person will no longer be working here. This person will no longer be attending church here because they just don't fit with us and we don't fit with them. But do it with compassion. This has been Bob Brown. I hope this video helps people now and in the future.